In this lesson, I'm going to discuss my favorite of all the special effects, luminosity. And you can read about luminosity in my book. There's a special chapter on light effects. So what is luminosity? It's the illusion that there is light or warmth coming from beneath the surface, and you're creating this illusion just using the three color concepts we've already talked about. If you've noticed, we talk about them again and again because they are basic, the basis of all color theory. So the luminosity recipe is this. When you surround a relatively small area of medium value, warm, intense color with a larger area of darker value, cooler, duller color, you get this amazing sense of glow. And as you might suspect, magic fabrics are a big part of this illusion. So here I have some samples. The ones on the left are medium in value, mostly, warm and intense. The ones on the right are darker, cooler, and duller. And one thing I would suggest if you want to work with this concept and work, and as you work with the color study for this lesson, is that you don't go too dark or too dull in the cool, darker, duller ones. You have to have a little life to your quilt. So let's look at some other examples. Pattern, you don't want too much pattern. That's another common deal breaker with luminosity. Let's put it here. Now this is a very traditional Amish double four patch that you've probably seen for years and I think it works wonderfully for luminosity. The small squares are very warm and intense and the um, squares that run vertically are also, light, are also lighter in value and they're cut from one of those woven plaids. The large squares are cooler, darker, and duller and the background has some warmth in it, but overall it reads cooler to me. And again, it's one of those woven plaids, so there's automatic luminosity happening in the fabric, which is sort of another cheap thrill. You get extra credit for that. So the block seems to glow, and it was actually this block that created the term magic fabrics that I talked about in a couple of other lessons. Now here's a pleasant block, yellow, green, blue, green. This is better. And to my eye, I like this block. I'm, I'm pleased with it. It's very, it's very comfortable. But look what happens if you replace that yellow green with a red orange. What a difference. Now it just seems to glow. And of course, these are just cut and paste exercise, so they're kind of sloppy. And I always tell my students that neatness does not count. So you get a stronger illusion when they're actually pieced. But changing this to something warm and intense and medium really draws your eye into the center of the block. Now I talked about using warm, intense colors for the centers, but you can get a softer glow. Actually, this is one more. Hold on. Wrong prop. You can get a softer glow when you use fabrics that are just a little bit less intense. These are all Marsha Dursey prints. I love her fabrics. And you can see that they don't just pulsate with heat and energy in the center but it's still very soft and very pleasing and there's this very, very subtle sense of glow. So think about that and also the patterns in this block I think are not distracting. You don't want to use a pattern that has let's say little white flowers on a solid blue background. You won't get any sense of luminosity if the pattern is too regular or if the background is just too flat. So you want low contrast in the patterns and you don't want just too much, too much pattern, too much busyness. So here's the one that I was jumping the gun on. So you can do a very, very simple luminosity color study just by using squares. And this is not pieced, it's cut and paste again, my favorite way. And I just superimpose two inch squares on top of four and a half inch squares. And you can see the sense of glow in here, very warm, warm colors here and here. Here's a yellow green that has a little bit of darker green that's sort of blending into the background piece, the surround piece, and I love that look. It makes it a little bit enigmatic. Now I have a couple of other examples. This sample is made from leftovers from the quilt I'm about to show you, and there's lots of contrast within the center parts, partly because they were leftovers. And you can see the sense of glow, but you can also see that some of the surround fabrics are not that dark and they're not that dull. In the upper left and lower right corners, those blue-green fabrics are not as dark as some of the others. And you really need to have that um, little variation in value and intensity to make it more interesting. Otherwise, the background looks like it's all one piece. So let me show you the quilt that became my Luminaria pattern. 
And in this example, you can see that for this quilt, I chose units that were more cohesive, similar in color rather than different. When there's contrast in the center area, it's more architectural, more structured. When the center areas are more cohesive, it's a smoother kind of sense of glow. Now you've got a color study to do, of course, and it is that block. And it's easier than it looks because you'll be cutting shapes and just laying them on top of the, uh, the background pieces and just gluing them on. So I want to see lots of these exercises because it's a wonderful way to learn about luminosity and really to learn about fabrics and how to discern value, temperature, and intensity. That's it for luminosity. Next time, luster and opalescence.